Hello everyone, and in this video, we're gonna be walking through how you can dockerize your existing Flask application. And so to begin with, I have uploaded all this code to GitHub in a public repository. So if you would like, you can download it and see how everything's working. This is a very simple uh, Flask application that I have on the screen up here. Uh, basically, we've got our normal app.py, we're importing the Flask package, we're creating an app, and then we're defining a route and uh, view template. Um, and in this case, our project directory has a templates directory that um, contains the actual HTML code for our uh, index.html or our root. So um, this is what the Flask application looks like. Uh, and to actually run it, we just hit uh, app.py and then you're gonna hit run or debug. And you can confirm that this is working by navigating to um, the host here, localhost port 5000. And you can see that everything's working as we expect it to. So I'm going to stop this application right now in Python uh, in our PyCharms IDE. And now what we're gonna be doing is actually containerizing this uh, into Docker. So um, the very first thing you're gonna do is make sure that you've got a requirements.txt file defined. Um, and in this case, I'm using Flask version 0.12. And then we're also gonna be creating a file called Docker file. You need to make sure that you capitalize that D because otherwise this won't run correctly. And I've tried to annotate uh, what's going on here, but basically inside of the Docker file, you're telling Docker how to build um, this particular uh, container or image that you're building. And so um, the first thing we're doing is we're importing the base image, which is Alpine. And Alpine's really cool because it's a lightweight uh, Linux distribution. It's only five megabytes, I believe. And so um, to keep your container small and easily uh, transportable between you know the computers that you're developing on, um, sticking with Alpine for Python in this case works pretty well. Um, we're also gonna define the present working directory as well as um, copying the contents of everything that's right now inside of our uh, IDE into this directory uh, in the image. And then we're going to run pip to actually install all the requirements that we have for our project, which in this case was just Flask, but you know, in your actual project, you could have hundreds. Um, and then finally, you're defining the command to actually uh, run inside of the Docker container um, when you're starting it to actually make your uh, Flask turn into a web server. So um, this is all the uh, code that you're gonna have inside of your Docker file. And so the next thing that you're actually gonna do here is uh, to create your Flask app, we are going to run the command um, in our terminal. So in PyCharms, I got this really nice thing here that just takes us right to our uh, project directory. We're going to run the command docker image build dash T, and then you're gonna name this image. So in this case, I'm gonna call this docker dash flask dash test and you're going to hit enter uh, and i always make this mistake <laughs> you need to have a space and then a period um, after that so um, once you run this you will now see docker begin to actually uh, grab the other docker images it needs and proceed with building um, your actual image so we'll let this thing run through And there you go. So in less than 30 seconds, we've got our basic Docker image that's just been built. And so now if we wanted to actually run this image, um, the first thing we can do to actually see all the images that we have would be Docker image LS. And uh, we can see that we've got that Docker flash test image that we just created. Next, what we're gonna be doing is going to docker run dash p. Um, so in this case, we're actually gonna be running it. So run, and then you're defining the port with the dash p flag. And uh, the first set of characters is defining the port on the host machine that you are going to be allocating to this Docker container. So in this case, we're setting the port bindings. 5000 is gonna be for this machine that I'm working on. And then the second 5000 is going to be the port on the Docker container itself. So in this case, the Flask application is gonna be running on port 5000 of the Docker container. So we're just binding port 5000 on the host to that actual um, thing on the Docker container. And now um, we're also gonna do dash D to run this in detached mode so that the terminal is running in a separate window. 
um, and then you're going to name the Docker uh, container when it's running as whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm just going to call it the same thing, which is docker-flask-test. Hit run, and you can see how quickly this thing was able to spin up. Um, and so now, if we go and open up our local host port 5000, we can see that we are now running Flask inside of a Docker container inside of our Windows computer. So um, that is pretty slick and it makes it a lot easier to ship this container to another computer so you can develop in a much more uh, easy way. Um, and so that's really awesome. Uh, the other thing we're going to make a note of here is that they basically give you the Docker container ID after you've done this. So after you're done playing around, you can copy that. And now what we're going to do is actually stop this Docker container. So you just run the command docker stop, paste in that ID, and then that should stop it from running. If we now try to see if we can get back to this host, um, you can see that it's now saying that it can't be reached because we've just stopped our Docker container. And then as best practice, when you're using Docker, after you've done, after you're done doing everything um, with your containers, uh, it's best to run the command docker system prune to free up all the resources like the volumes and networks. Um, so you just do that, you hit yes on the keyboard. And so basically we've just reclaimed some space from the container that we weren't really using. And so there you go. So that is how we can take a Flask application, dockerize it, run it, stop it, and then prune it afterwards. So with this Docker container, if you have Docker installed on your computer, um, you can check it and you can run it from, uh, in this case I'm using Windows, um, but you can run it from here. It's pretty great. And yeah, so I'm going to wrap things up with that. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and take care.